my name is Deborah Hamilton, and welcome to my podcast, Why Do Pets Matter? This podcast seeks to define and explain this important question from multiple points of view and disciplines. We will interview owners, breeders, caregivers, defenders, advocates, champions, and educators. The mission of this podcast is to seek and foster collaborative conversations so that every point of view feels heard, acknowledged, and appreciated. I look forward to your joining us on this journey toward a better understanding of similar and divergent points of view. It is possible to have an impossible conversation. It starts with listening first. I'm so glad you're here listening in with me. Now let's get started. Today, I'm speaking with the wonderful Dr. Joy Furman. She's not only a veterinarian, but she's an MBA and a CPA. She started Shepherd Software. She's the COO of Shepherd Software, which is a practice management system for veterinarians. And why is that important? Because why do pets matter? If we can have our vets have less time trying to manage their business and more time being with their clients, pets will matter more. So Joy is right there on the, on the front lines, making things easier for veterinarians so that they can, in fact, treat animals more compassionately because they're not worried about keeping track of everything. She has a system for them to do that. And we'll talk about that later. But Joy, welcome to Why Do Pets Matter? Thank you, Deborah. It's great to be here with you. Well, I'm so thrilled you're here because you're one of uh, the people who are such an important part of the veterinarian arena. And I'd love to know, from your point of view, why do pets matter to you? Well, dare dare I say it, I think pets really bring joy into my life. Um, You know, my whole life I've had a pet, you know, usually a dog, but also sometimes a cat or even a lizard or uh, whatever it is, uh, living and sharing my my living space with me. And they've been a big part of my life, big part of the ups and big part of the downs. And they've always been there for me unconditionally and um, have just brought such great happiness and joy to me. It's it's so great that your first name actually is the description of why do pets matter to you because they bring you so much joy. I love that you um, spoke about the ups and the downs and their unconditional love because quite frankly, that's sort of the theme of everyone who's been on Why Do Pets Matter because even though they're in the pet space, they're working in the pet space, they've been educated in the pet space, the bottom line is why pets matter to them is because of their experiences with pets and as you just said from you know the beginning you had pets when you were young what kind of pets did you have when you were young well my my first dog was a corgi who was born on the same day as me (laughs) um penny was the love of my life probably always will be um and was just such a fabulous dog and ever since then um my bond and passion for animals has just grown and developed. So how did you um, come to decide, obviously Penny was one of the motivating forces, and I'm sure there were one or two other dogs in your life that got you through, you know, high school, since Penny was born the same day as you, is that the same year or just the same day? No, same year, same day, same exact day. (laughs) Oh my God, wasn't that just serendipitous because you, I, I actually um, have, have a dog whose name was Coincidence because she was born the same day as my first Irish setter that I had as an adult um, two years mm-hmm. later. So we had to um, name the dogs with a Q because it was a show dog and they're cra- show people are crazy. I'm one of them, so I am crazy. <laughs> So her name was Coincidence with a Q. And uh, so I think it's so serendipitous to be able to know that the first dog you ever owned was born the same day you were born and lived, I guess, several years because corgis are long-lived dogs. Yes, yes. She did live well into my high school years. Um, But uh, yeah, eventually she did pass. And we moved on to another corgi and a couple other Mats along the road as well. 
So. You no, know, it's so fun because we we live our lives with these animals who transition with us from well, for you, from infancy to grade school to middle school to high school, and they really do um, create that that bond that gives you, the, as you said, you know, sharing and, and living those ups and downs. Yeah, and that's true. And, you know, as an adult, I've had dogs, you know, be with me through relationships and be there by my side through breakups. And um, they just stayed with me through thick and thin and, and you know, just bring that support and connection and, and bond that, you know, sadly, I, I think, in most of our relationships, we don't really get that kind of unconditional love from humans. So um, I think people have a really special connection with, with animals that they cannot get anywhere else. I know, and it's it's changed over the years, don't you think? So you've been a vet for several years now, um, and I don't know how long you've had your MBA or your CPA, but probably for a few years. When you first mm -hmm. went to vet school, um, animals were probably just transitioning from, you know, pets that we um, had as, as family members to really companions and members of the family. Um, well, I think it's, it's true. Uh, you know, first of all, I'll, I'll point out that I, I was a CPA and, and before I even went to vet school. So while I've been a vet for a while, um, it wasn't my first career. Wow, uh, but how great is that? that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a whole other story. <laughs> um, but I, I absolutely agree with you. I think the the millennials and even the newer generations have are really um, growing into that role of seeing pets as a family member. Um, and you know, there's certainly statistics out there that show that they are. Uh, owning more animals, spending more money on their animals, um, being more interested in, in providing appropriate veterinary care for their animals. Um, and they've really built a bond with pets that I don't think we've seen before. I think our connection with animals is unprecedented in today's times. I agree because my son actually has a cat that is really so close to him and and I've never I've never owned a cat because my husband's allergic and I didn't have one growing up um, but I now have a grand kitty and she's lovely but they're, they're such a different personality from a dog yet with him it's not so it's really interesting they bond and they they really stick with um, the person who is their caregiver. That's that's true, and you know I can see same thing. My son has has a cat, and he's so very connected. and And interestingly, he is um, he's on the autism spectrum, and I think owning a pet and being responsible for a pet has really helped him um, grow and develop in his own social skills and 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 help him, um, you know, improve in his. Uh, difficulties that he has being on the spectrum. You know, it's so interesting that animals have been found to really give a sense of grounding to people on or off the spectrum when they're in, you know, difficult situations or having difficult experiences. These animals, why do they matter? Because they really help us get through things. So your son is benefiting from his, the ownership of his cat because she, she or he um, has provided him with this grounding. I need to eat. I need my litter box cleaned out. I need water yep. and I need affection. So those four things you have to provide me and I will provide you um, with a clean house <laughs> and, and <laughs> unconditional love. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's been a great, um, a learning lesson for him in terms of developing responsibility and, and you know, growing his social skills. And um, so it's, it's really been a joy to see that, that happen. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, it's it's interesting to watch um, my son, who's who's grown up with dogs <laughs> since I had dogs before I had him. And uh, at one point I said to my husband, if my kids are allergic to the dogs, um, we will sell them on the open market, which probably is <laughs> terrible to say, um, but we'll keep the dogs. And, and my son always says, I'm so glad I wasn't allergic because I would be somewhere else. Like, no, I was only teasing, but, you know, not really, but really, because we had had dogs for many years before 
um, we had children. So Joy, tell me now, you've been in the business space and thank you for letting us know that you did it opposite to what I thought you did, which is phenomenal, uh, that you were the CPA MBA, and then you decided, well, my love for animals, I guess, and correct me if I'm wrong, my love for animals um, is really going to have me pursue a degree in veterinary medicine. And tell, the, tell us, you know, why do pets matter? Clearly, they matter to you because you were doing the business thing, and then you went to do the animal thing. So share with us how that transition occurred. Yeah, so, you know, I was that kid who wanted to be a veterinarian, you know, from, you know, her entire life. Um, But, you know, unlucky for me, or lucky, I don't know, I grew up in South Africa. And there was one vet school. Um, It was in a fairly remote, far-off location. Um, It was taught in a different language. Um, And at age 17, it was uh, it, it was just too big and overwhelming change for me to take on. So I decided not to pursue a career in veterinary medicine at that stage and uh, dutifully went to the big city and went to business school and um, and my life took me down that direction. I worked as a CPA in um, big accounting firms for many years and then Somewhere in my late 30s, I uh, took a step back and realized that they just, it, it just wasn't meaningful enough for me. Um, you know, I was just spending all my time essentially making rich people richer, and I needed to do something that had more grounding, more meaning, and more giving back to the world. And I chose to give it all up and uh, go back to vet school and you know pursue what had always been my dream of being a veterinarian so um so that's how i ended up in the profession and you know interestingly though i think uh you know since graduating i've come to find that for me a big passion is helping veterinarians navigate that business piece Um, because veterinarians are wonderful people and they have great love for animals and they're wonderful with their clients and they feel so unprepared and intimidated by managing a business. And um, for me, um, because I've always been in that realm, I feel comfortable enough to help guide them and support them through that piece that they just feel they're not equipped to handle. Um, And that for me has been an incredible uh, passion uh, to bring that to this industry. So not only do pets matter to you, and that's why you went back to get your veterinary degree, but now with your veterinary degree, I would um, think that veterinarians feel you know what they do, you you know who they are, and you've got their backs when you give them information on how to run their business. Yeah, yeah, and I think, you know, in my role at Shepherd Software, I think what makes our software very unique is that we've been developed by veterinarians. So we really get why, you know, how veterinarians think, how they work up cases, how we move through appointments and how the team handles appointments. Um, So that's really what sets us apart in the industry is that just the deep knowledge and understanding of, you know, how we treat animals. You've walked the walk. You've you've done the scheduling. You've done the the patient interaction um, and the you know collection, which can often be very stressful for the veterinarian. Most veterinarians um, don't want to ask for money. They have to because they have to turn the lights on. Um, and I think, in my experience with pet owners, they sometimes feel that veterinarians charge too much and should be doing this for the good of the animal. And quite frankly, they are doing a lot of it for the good of the animal because they got their education and they open their practice and they're there every day. But quite frankly, I I don't think vets are equipped when they get out of school to talk to their patients about how much it costs to open the door. And you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And and all too often I see 
veterinarians discounting their services or undercharging. You know, and there's parts of the country that just don't charge what the services are worth. Um, and, you know, nowhere else in the business realm do you go to a professional and, you know, expect them to give their services away for free. Um, and, you know, yes, it is because we all have that very unique bond with animals, but, um, you know, in my purview, it's really about educating the client. It's about helping them understand the value of what you bring um, and why it's important to perform diagnostics, to do preventive health, to take care of your pets um, so that you don't end up in the ER um, in the middle of the night when it's going to cost you two or three times as much. You know, it's interesting you said that because educating the client is, is also a piece that veterinarians aren't necessarily as well equipped as we would all like when they're having a conversation with their client. And sometimes they presume um, understanding that is really not evident. And so with what you do, you give them a little more time to spend with their clients uh, so they can be more inquisitive and curious whether or not their clients get what they're talking about. Yeah, and that that's exactly right. I mean, you know, you speak to any veterinarian, I think they, the hardest part of their day is, is uh, writing medical records. And uh, it's really important in what we do at Shepherd to have developed a system that makes the whole process much more efficient um, and just saves them time doing the stuff that they really don't want to be doing so that they can be maximizing their time with their clients and with their patients. Um, because that's where they need it. Absolutely, because the, the first of all, there's the big fear-free group that, that teaches people how to come in and be fear-free. However, the veterinarian also provides the fear-free to the other end of the leash because of the cost of understanding what next steps are, of spending enough time to really hear what the veterinarian needs to hear so that they can accurately diagnose a pet. And if, you, if you're busy, as you said, doing what we all hate, which is making notes after calls um, or after visits or whatever, we, we all hate making those notes, but we have to make the notes because we have to know what we did and we have to know what was said and we have to know what we've dispensed. And, and so if we can, um, uh, streamline that process so that veterinarians can spend more time speaking with the client, hearing exactly what they're saying as opposed to trying to guess what they're saying or, you know, put that forward. I know that a lot of veterinarians um, that I know love to really have a conversation um, that is, you know, what does your pet do every day? Because why do pets matter? Because we will notice as pet owners little things that could be really big things uh, that we need to share with our vet in a way that the vet can understand the information we're giving them um, and then help diagnose. And if they're writing up charts, they may not have enough time to let us really, you know, ramble around and get to what they need to hear. Yes, and, and that's exactly true. And I think, you know, as a veterinarian, um, you're wearing multiple hats. You're kind of playing therapist, kind of playing financial advisor, um, you know, and playing doctor as well. And uh, you have to take the time to honor all of those roles and, and give the client the time that they need and deserve um, in order to best help that client and thereby help the pet. So, Joy, when you got into the veterinary field, what was your first takeaway when and and I'm I'm pretty sure you met with pets at the beginning before you started Shepherd or did you come right out thinking you know I can pr provide a great service for veterinarians that will help them um, do a better job with the business end so that they can um, make sure they spend more time with their clients how did that transition from being an MBA and a CPA and and then deciding no I really want to do yeah. something that has more impact and leading to veterinary school, then the veterinary profession, was it immediately to the business side or did you, did you first meet with clients so that you had that hands-on experience? Mm. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, every veterinarian does need to have experience in practice. And actually, I, I still practice uh, a few days a, a month uh, just to keep my finger in the pie, so to speak. Um, right out of vet school, I actually I stayed on at Colorado State University working in the clinics and uh, learned that I had great passion for teaching students. Uh, that was uh, a really phenomenal experience. Um, and then from there, I also uh, I worked in practice for a while um, and kind of found my way being uh, gravitating toward practice consulting. I had many uh, veterinary colleagues reaching out to me for business advice as they started moving into practice ownership um, and then uh, spent several years in practice consulting, which led me to this role um, at Shepherd Software. Um, I, and as I said, I, I still continue to practice because I think it's important to keep those skills to, um, you know, continue to have the bond with pets and with, with owners. Um, so that I can be more relevant to the veterinarians that I work with. It really is key to keep your, your, um, your finger in the pie, so to speak, so that you know the changing transitions that are happening between veterinarians, their staff, uh, owners, because in order to really um, have your um, shepherd software be, remain relevant to the veterinarian. You have to know how the veterinarian's life is changing and you can't really do that unless you're experiencing it firsthand, which clearly that's what you're doing now. You're practicing and you're helping other veterinarians use a software that will enable them to be uh, the best practitioner they can be. Sadly, in this profession, I see a lot of consultants who are very well known and reputable but, you know, who haven't really worked in practice for decades. And, um, you know, I, I often question the, the relevance of what they are bringing to the profession that I think their points of view may have been pertinent several years ago, but have not changed with the times. I have to tell you, I just uh, attended the AVMA uh, Wellbeing summit and that was one of the questions that were raised a great deal of the time with everyone sitting in the room being early adopters of the need to um, support veterinarians mental health uh, because of the stress of being a veterinarian which i hope we can talk about on our next podcast you and i because it is such um, an important topic to talk about uh, but it was the the overriding thought was there are older people who are practicing or not practicing, or who went through this and toughed it out and so have not the empathy they might need in order to practice veterinary medicine and mentor other new veterinarians to really continue in this profession. Yeah, and, and the face of the profession is changing. You know, for, for many decades, uh, the profession was dominated by the uh, by male veterinarians who typically had a wife who stayed at home to take care of the kids. Um, and now we have a completely different picture. We have a lot of young women in the profession who are mothers, whose husbands work as well, who are single mothers, and they have completely different life needs. And I think the... Um, the process of trying to fit those people into that more traditional role of being a veterinarian has caused undue stress and pressure and a lot of, as you said, the mental um, lack of well-being um, in, in our profession. And I think uh, as an industry, we have to adapt and change. And just because that's the way it was always done doesn't mean that that is the way we need to continue to do it. And if we don't adapt, we are going to continue to see not only veterinarians leaving the profession, but we'll start attracting fewer and less qualified candidates into our vet schools. You're, you're absolutely right, because to support the veterinarian to support us and our pets um, is, is key. 
And uh, Nadine Hamilton has a group in Australia called Love Your Pet, Love Your Vet, where she really mm -hmm. talks about psychology of being a vet and the psychology of being a pet owner. And in, in that discussion, it is the mutual respect that has to be um, uh, the, the right word I want to use is sort of like nurtured because there is a mutual respect because the pet owners are really able um, to care for their pets and want to care for their pets in a different way in the 21st century as opposed to the 20th century. And we really as veterinarians and people in the veterinary space need to understand that that comes with a different level of communication, a different level of respect for pet owners and pet service providers, uh, veterinarians and their staff and their front desk people. Uh, so this conversation, I can't wait to um, continue it. We're almost at the end of the podcast now, but wow, it's, you know, why do pets matter? Well, we have to keep everybody, you know, happy and healthy, the pets and the pet service providers, the veterinarians and the pet owners. So that's a huge discussion that I hope you'll come back, Joy, and, and chat with me uh, next time about how to make sure that everyone um, is, is kind and understanding and compassionate uh, for each other in this um, relationship, because it is a relationship now. It's, it's not just a practice of veterinary medicine. It's the relationship of veterinary medicine to the entire culture in the, in the veterinary practice, as well as, I think, the, the um, vet client staff relationship. Um, do, you have, do you have any closing thoughts you'd like to give us? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think you, you really hit the nail on the head there. And you know, I would like to see us uh, as teams and as that veterinary uh, client relationship learn to treat one another the way our pets treat us. Because if, if we behave like our pets did, I think we'd bring a very unique um, understanding and, and so much more joy back to our connections with our clients and our staff. Absolutely. Why do pets matter? Because we could be better people if we watched how they interacted. And maybe that will be part of our next conversation, too, because with their unconditional love and with their um, ability to forgive and forget uh, in the moment, it, it really is um, a great way to engage more fully with each other. Joy, I am so grateful you were here on Why Do Pets Matter? I'm glad everyone is here listening to your wonderful words. I'm so blown away by MBA, CPA, and then vet school. I wanted to go to vet school too, but chemistry was my undoing. So, so I went to law school instead. Uh, they didn't have any chemistry in law school, thank God. Uh, but I'm so glad you were here. And everyone who's listening, please like this and share it with people because it is such an impactful and wonderful podcast um, series or, or event that we have here. And I'm so glad you came, Joy. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me, Deborah. It was a great pleasure. So to everyone who's listening, this is Why Do Pets Matter with Deborah Hamilton as your host. And we look forward to you coming back and listening to our next podcast next week. Until then, why do pets matter to you? Because they just love us unconditionally. Bye now. Thank you for listening to my podcast, Why Do Pets Matter? This is Deborah Hamilton, and this podcast is my passion. Do you have a great guest or idea for a topic you'd like me to explore? Go to my website and click Contact at Hamilton Law and Mediation. That's Hamilton. Law, L-A-W, and A-N-D, mediation, M-E-D-I-A-T-I-O-N dot com. Until next week, our pets do matter. This is Deborah Hamilton thanking you for being here.